The Lord be with you. I invite you to turn with me and your copy of Holy Scripture to the 13th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. Chapter 13, we'll be reading verses 1 through 9 and then down verses 18 through 23. Matthew chapter 13, beginning with verse 1. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. And then down to verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth Choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. May God bless the reading and hearing of Holy Scripture. Would you pray with me? And now, O God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock, our redeemer, our friend. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, I, like probably most of you in this room, uh, we're born in a family that was, uh, let's say, adamantly opposed to wasting things. It really is probably most uh, grounded in my grandmother. In fact, I'd like to think one of the reasons I'm so healthy is uh, somewhere down in the subconscious of my soul is Rosie O'Rean's voice. If you put that, plate, put that on your plate, you better eat it. And if you don't, I'm going to go cut a switch. So every time I sit down at the table and I see something on the plate, I better eat it or Grandma's going to rise up out of the grave and go cut a switch. It was ingrained in us. You don't waste stuff. Grandma, in fact, she would get angry sometimes. She would go to town, go to Winn-Dixie and buy Coca-Colas, but that's how she said it. But they weren't Coca-Colas. They're Czech Colas. Had Mark Martin's picture on the can, I remember. Grandma kept them in the refrigerator, and you could have one if you wanted it, but you had better not let her find it sitting on the kitchen table. Sometime later that afternoon, half drank and flat, she would come find you. You don't waste stuff. It was ingrained in us. In fact, I remember one time when we were kids, my two cousins, David and Brad and I, we went, I guess it was with a church group, to Ayrton, Alabama. Anybody been to Ayrton? Just good. You don't have any reason to go. Um, 
In Ayrton, there was a place called Christmas City around Christmas time, and it'd be all these lights, and we went there, and, and it was either on the way there or on the way back. We stopped at a seafood buffet. I think it was called Greens. None of y'all owned it out, right? Okay. There's a bunch of y'all in here. You know that. And we stopped there, and, and I guess we had never been to a buffet before because they had to explain to us how it worked. They said, you can take your plate, and you can go up there and get as much of you as you want of whatever you want. That's a dangerous thing to tell these three little country boys. So we went up there and we put, you know, chicken fingers, catfish, beans, all that kind of stuff on our plate. And then what was even more dangerous was somebody told us, when you get done with that, guess what? You can go back and get more. David finished before the rest of us. And he had found out he really liked these little popcorn shrimp they had. So he ran up and came back, sat down at the table with a plate mounted up high with this like brown fried stuff, right? And he, he took one bite, and his face just fell. And he spit it out on a napkin, and he started to cry. Somebody said, David, what's the matter? If you don't like it, you don't have to eat it. No, no, you don't understand. Grandma going to whoop me. <laughs> he was worried somehow Grandma was going to find out that he had wasted it. You just don't waste stuff. And I have to tell you, uh, every time, every time I hear this parable, I cannot help but imagine somewhere on the beach in that crowd of folks, there's a rosy O'Ring hearing Jesus talking about this sower who just throwing seed all over the place. And she leans over and says, you know, he really ought not to waste the seed. After all, we call it the parable of the sower or the parable of the soils or the dirt. Because if you read this story, then Matthew in that second half gives us a nice little explanation from Jesus, right? What it's about. It's about dirt. It's about the soil. A guy goes out like it's his last day at work. He's told the boss, I'm done with you. I'll go sow the field one more time. Gets his bag of seed, goes out and just starts throwing it everywhere willy-nilly. Some of it goes in the driveway. Some of it goes down in the ditch. Some of it goes over in the neighbor's yard. He don't care. He's just flinging it wherever it'll go. And in Jesus' parable, some of it lands on the path. Well, the seed ain't going to take on the path. The birds just come along and eat it. Some falls in the rocky ground. It springs up, looks nice, but the roots don't have anywhere to go, so it dies in the sun. Another, some more falls among the thorns. Doesn't really get a chance to grow because the weeds choke it out. But that fourth one lands in the good dirt. And not only does it grow, but it's a miraculous yield. A hundred, sixty, thirtyfold, Jesus said. It's amazing. And usually when I hear it, when I hear that story, it's usually about you be good dirt, right? That's what I hear. You be uh, potting soil. You be ready. Get, all, get rid of all the stuff in your life that's clogging it up, that's distracting you from the Word, all that stuff. But every time I read it myself, I can't help but think, what a waste. And the truth is, there were some listening to Jesus' story, listening to His parable on the beach, I probably thought the same thing. You see, these little parables in chapter 13 are sandwiched between some events that will cause one to wonder why Jesus is wasting his time. There are people who come to Jesus. The crowds would have seen it every day. The faithful who had been there every morning, they got up. What's Jesus up to today? Let's go out and see what Jesus is doing. They would sit there all day, follow Jesus around, listen to what he'd have to say, and they'd see the new folks come up. They'd see them walk up, and they'd size them up. Yeah, those folks right there, we know who they are. They'll come for a little bit. They'll be here Christmas and Easter. They'll come up. Oh, those folks right there, I know who they are. Those are church hoppers. They're just coming to hear the latest thing, but they'll be back at the other synagogue in town, and they'll be over here a little bit later. Some were worse. Some came and, and, and it sounded like they wanted something. We call one of them the rich young ruler. Walked up to Jesus. Lord, Rabbi, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, it's easy. Just listen to the book. Follow the rules. You'll have it down. Oh, I do all that already. And Jesus said, oh, well, then just sell everything you've got. Give the money to the poor and come follow me. And can't you almost hear the thorns growing up and choking the life? out of the rich young ruler. They would have seen all these things while Jesus got in the boat and they sat on the beach. 
And I'm sure they thought to themselves, why are we wasting our time? Jesus, we only have such a limited amount of resources. Why fool with going to the folks who aren't going to hear, who don't get it? Why fool with wasting our time with the people who don't understand? They're not going to understand. Just cut them loose. Or, Jesus, why waste our time? Why waste our time with the people who are only going to burn hot and heavy for a little while? When the ways of the world catch up with them and we know they're going to leave, you know who they are. You don't have to dissect it that much. Why waste our time? Or why waste our time, Jesus, with those who come up looking for easy answers, looking for some, some quick fix? And when they don't get what they want, they leave. Why waste our time? Jesus, you know what good dirt looks like. You know who they are. Go after them. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting our time and our resources. I can hear it. It's a valid argument. It's one I've heard before. Don't waste your time. Why waste our time serving those folks? They ain't going to come to church. They won't show up. You can give them the shirt off your back, and they're not going to come and sit in the church. They're not going to do it. Let's not waste our time. Why waste our money and our resources on those folks? Go help them. Go help them. Go do this stuff. And then, then when you ask them about faith, they go, no, no, I don't believe all that. Don't waste your time, Jesus. I can hear it. And I think it's a valid argument. I really do. If, if the seed is nothing more in the theological disposition. If the word which the sower sows is nothing more than some sort of checklist, something you have to agree with. But I'm becoming more convinced that that's not what it is. Jesus says, or at least Matthew tells us that Jesus says, that what the sower sows is in fact the word. Now, the word, is, and that's a loaded term for us Christian folks. We think it's the Bible. We think it's uh, Jesus if we read John. But really it just means the message. The thing that is at the core of what Jesus is doing. The sower is sowing the core of what Jesus is he come to talk about. And what is it? Man, if we only had it written down, right? If it was only laid out, cut and dry for us, what the word really is. Oh, Wait, there's a story about a lawyer who comes to Jesus. Stop me. Don't stop me if you've heard this one before. He comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, uh, Rabbi, you're the, we know you know what's good and, and all this stuff, but tell us, what's the big, what's the big thing? What's the most important thing? And do you remember what Jesus says? He says, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your... Love God with everything you got. And before they can take a breath, he says, and the second one is like it. That's a way to say it's the same thing. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. So what's the seed? What's the word in the parable? What's love? Love God, love others, uh, shorthand, love. And so the sower sows the seed indiscriminately, throwing it wherever it falls. And when you think it's just a message, when you think it's just some sort of uh, uh, argument to be won, well, then it sounds like a waste. It sounds like a waste to just spend time and money and effort and resources in getting the message out to people who aren't going to listen to, to soil that ain't going to take. But when you realize that the seed, the word, the message is love, all of a sudden it's not so wasteful. All of a sudden you realize that what the sower is doing is spreading love everywhere. It made me think of a time when I was in college at Samford. At Samford, uh, it's a little different now, but not much. They, they had the cafeteria upstairs and downstairs was the food court. 
had things like Chick-fil-A and uh, Walmart brand Burger King and stuff like that. What I mean is it wasn't really Burger King, but it was Burger King. We all knew what it was. And I remember one day meeting my friend Brian in the food court for lunch. And there was a guy who worked in the food court. Allie, he still might be there. I don't know. But he was just always sarcastic and kind of rude to folks. You'd put your tray down and go, thank you, and like take it and walk off. Just mean, sort of. And I remember having lunch with Brian, and we went to throw our trash in the, in, in the garbage can. He set his tray down. This guy came over, snatched it, said, I was waiting for y'all to get done. It's about time. And Brian looked at him, put his hands on his shoulders, and just said, I hope you have a good day. And he mm, and just walked off. And Brian and I were walking, and Brian said, I'm going to love him whether he likes it or not. And that stuck with me. Because there's a part of me that wants to say, Brian, you're wasting your time. There's a part of me that wants to say, every time, every time I get in the car, or every time I have a conversation with somebody in another community, in a different place, somebody who, who in the back of my mind, I know this person's not going to come to church. This person thinks I'm full of, you know, not truth. Every time I sit down to have a conversation, every time I work along with some of you to help somebody else, and in the back of my mind, it's always there. These people aren't going to come. These people don't get it. I feel like we're wasting our time. But I'm reminded that what we are called to do it's not to waste our time and our resources, but to liberally throw that seed of love wherever it will go. To trust that the ground is not ours anyway, that the ground is God's. And truth be told, the seed's not ours. Love is a gift from God to us. And I'm beginning to learn the more I throw it out, the more I, I just sort of cast it wherever it will go, the more God gives me. As if it won't run out. As if God is just saying, here, waste some more. Here, waste some more. Here, waste some more. Here, keep going. Keep throwing it out. It doesn't matter if it comes back a hundredfold or sixtyfold or thirty. It doesn't matter if it costs you everything. Here's some more. Throw it out. Cast it wherever it will go. Throw it on the path. Throw it in the rocky ground. Throw it among the thorns. Throw it in the good dirt. Throw it wherever. Throw it to the man standing on the side of I-75 when the traffic is backed up with a cardboard sign. Homeless, please help. Throw it to the couple who don't know what they're going to do because the church has shut the door on them. Throw it. To whoever. Throw it to the children who don't have any food to eat and give them what you have and more. Throw it out there, even if they're not going to get fed tomorrow. Throw it out there. Throw it out there to the people who will never come in the door of your church. Throw it out there to the people who think the Bible is nonsense. Throw it out there to the people who believe in a different God than you do. Throw that seed out there. It's not up to you whether or not the dirt takes it. It's up to you. Whether or not you throw it out there. Because the day comes. We'll have to stand. And if we got seed in our hand, he's going to say, why didn't you throw it out? I was going to give you more. Why didn't you throw it out? So throw it out. Stop asking if you're wasting your time. Stop asking if you're wasting your resources. Stop asking those questions and start asking, where does God want me to throw it out? To put the seed wherever it is. To sow love all over the world. All over in the dark corners where it may not grow. But God still called me to sow it. So what will you do? Right now, in the moment when you stand up, I want you to think. If you're like me, you put your hands in your pockets when you hold the hymnal, right? And y'all do that? None of y'all do that, right? Just me? I'm the only weird person? Okay. At some point, you're going to put your hand in your pocket. You're going to put your hand in a purse. You're going to put your hand somewhere. When you put your hand in your pocket, I want you to imagine that God has filled it with seed. And he's calling you as soon as you walk out of this place to sow it wherever you go.
May we be faithful sowers of the seed, of the word of love. And may we cast it liberally and without concern for what we'll get in return. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us when we hold the seed in our own hands. Lord, when we use our own eyes to look for good soil, help us, Lord, to remember that the seed that we have is not ours Lord, it comes from you, and you call us to sow it all over the place. Help us to be faithful stewards and sowers of the seed. Help us, Lord, to share your love in ways that make us sound crazy to other people. Help us, God, not to look for our own outcomes, but to trust you the power of your Holy Spirit at work in this world. And Lord God, be with us now as we listen for your voice. Lord, as we reach perhaps into our pockets and fill even there the seed that you give us to cast into this world, the hope of your love. And help us, Lord, when we leave this place to cast it indiscriminately. Be with us now, Lord, we pray in this time of response and invitation. In your holy name we pray. Amen.